All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how we make the Mow the Musk Ox pattern. This is a pattern that's available at shinyhappyworld.com. It's a pattern for just a single applique block. You can mix it into other patterns that I make, or you can combine them with other single block patterns, or you can put them on a t-shirt or a tote bag, uh, but he is Mow the Musk Ox. And, um, I use Quilt As You Go for all of my quilts, and I'm just gonna talk you through a nutshell version of that. I have a free workshop that takes you through all of these steps in a lot of detail, so really what I'm just gonna give you here is just the basic overview so you have an idea of how the whole quilt is gonna be put together. So I start by just quilting my background fabric to my batting, no backing, and I'm gonna flip him over so you can see that. So you can see that the quilting lines, these wavy, doubly wave, double wavy lines, are covering the entire surface of the block. And I like to do that while I have just a single block because it lets me really maneuver it through the machine. I don't do free motion quilting. This is all with the walking foot engaged. And um, I want to have the, the smallest piece of fabric that I need to deal with to do all of those turns and twists and things. So the first thing I do is applique the block to the batting. I'm sorry, quilt the block to the batting. And then I add my applique on top of that quilting. Add the applique, fuse it all down. Then I do the outline stitching. Again, while I've got this easy to maneuver single block that I'm dealing with. I'm gonna flip him over again and show you so you can see all of the outline stitching is just through the batting. After I get the quilting done, the applique done, the outline stitching done, that's when I'm gonna trim all of my blocks down to size, sew them together, press those seams open, and then I attach the backing. And the backing does get quilted to the front, so there is one final round of quilting that you have to do, but it's just straight line quilting, just stitch in the ditch, along the seams that are joining the blocks together. And this is a block that finishes at 10 inches square. So you're doing just a straight line of stitching 10 inches apart, uh, which is the easiest kind of quilting that you could possibly do when you're trying to wrestle the entire bulk of a quilt through the machine. I can do a nap size quilt, which is good for on the couch in about a half an hour, just to kind of give you a guideline. So that is the nutshell, big, broad overview of how I do Quilt As You Go. Now we're gonna get into the details on how we make the Mow the Musk Ox box block. Okay, you're gonna start by printing or tracing the pattern pages and the Musk Ox takes two sheets because he's a big bulky guy onto the paper side of uh, paper backed fusible adhesive. This is the brand that I use. It's heat and bond. Lightweight is the weight that I use for all of my quilts. I really like. It's the perfect balance of softness and durability. Um, and I use the printable sheets because I'm lazy and I don't like to trace. So I print it directly onto the paper side of the adhesive. If you don't want to do that, you can just print it out on regular paper and then trace it onto the paper side of your fusible adhesive. The pattern pieces have already been reversed and they are exploded, which means all of the pieces that would normally overlap each other are, listed, are, are pulled apart so that you can cut them out individually. So cutting them out is the next step. And the first thing that you're gonna do is what I call a rough cut. And what I mean by that is don't cut right on the lines. You wanna cut these pieces out roughly. You wanna leave a little bit of the white paper showing outside all of the solid lines. For now, ignore all of the dotted lines. Those are for placement, and I'll talk to you in a later segment about that. Um, but just worry about the solid lines Cut them out roughly a little bit outside the solid lines and then follow the directions for whatever brand you're using and fuse it to the back side of your fabric. I'm using Batiks for this sample of the applique and Batiks have no front and back. They look good from both sides, but normally you would fuse it onto the back side of your fabric. And then we'll come on to the next step. Okay, the next step after getting everything rough cut and fused is to do what I call the clean cut. And that's exactly what it sounds like. You're gonna do a nice, clean, smooth cut around the solid lines. Again, we're just doing the solid lines here. And the reason that you do the rough cut and then the clean cut later 
is to make sure that that fusible adhesive is going right up to the edge. So right now I am cutting through a section of fabric that has got that adhesive embedded in it. And that means that the, the adhesive is going to go right up and cover every last thread of that cut piece. And that's what you want. So here are all the pieces that we've got. We've got his muzzle, we've got a couple of horns, a head, and his big bulky body, and then we've got a couple of smaller bits too. We've got some eyes, and we've got some nostrils. Again, all of these are just cut out on the solid lines, and we're going to talk about the all of these placement markings next. Okay, so all of my pieces are clean cut, and now it's time to deal with all of these dotted lines. And those lines all mark the placement of something. So it can be showing you where an applique piece sits directly on top of another, where a couple of pieces overlap, or it can be where you're going to do some stitching lines, just some lines, detail lines for like his mouth. So you don't have to transfer all of these markings, but a couple of them are especially helpful. I think it's really important to get the eyes exactly right. So I always mark the position of the eyes and also the mouth, just because I want a nice, solid, clean line to follow for that. And for those, I use a black Sharpie. Nothing fancy, just a fine point Sharpie. Um, the reason I can use a black Sharpie on those is two reasons. So for the nostrils and the eyes, I'm going to lay a solid black applique over that, and it doesn't matter that my lines would show through. If it was a lighter fabric, a black line could show through, but they're never going to show through the black fabric. I'm going to stitch on this no, this mouth line, and I'm going to stitch directly on that line with black thread. So again, the black permanent marker is great to use. It makes a nice crisp line that's easy for me to follow at the sewing machine, and I don't need to worry about it showing because it's just going to be emphasized with that black stitching. All of the rest of the lines, I use something erasable, and what I choose to use depends on what the color of the fabric is. So whenever possible, I use just plain white chalk. You can erase it with an eraser. It's uh, just really handy and easy to use. So you can see on his head, I did the eyes with the black pen, and then I marked the position of the muzzle and the horns, just tracing these lines with the chalk line. So to, to get that, to show those lines through, put it up in a window, uh, just put, place it in a window with the light shining through on the fabric on your side, and these lines will show right through, even a, a very dark fabric, and you can just trace those lines right on there. Sometimes, though, a white chalk line does not show, for example, on these horns. They are use a fairly light fabric, so for them, nothing fancy, I just use a plain old pencil. You can erase pencil off of uh, fabric, no problem. I like these Ticonderoga pencils, but I don't like to use any kind of a colored eraser when I'm erasing, because sometimes they can leave a smudge mark. So my other very, very fancy tool is a very cheap white plastic artist eraser, and that will erase both the chalk lines and the pencil lines. So after you use those as your guidelines, erase them, and then do your outline stitching, and all those lines are gone. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to show you those placement lines in action as we layer the pieces together. All right, now comes the fun part, putting it all together. So we're going to start with the big body piece. Peel off the paper backing. And you lay it so that this straight cut edge is lined up with the bottom edge of your block. And I'm going to kind of center this guy in there side by side, side to side. There's not a lot of room uh, outside those horns, so I'm going to get him pretty centered in there. Next up is his face, and now you can start seeing some of those placement lines in action. So this is going to show me exactly where his face goes. And I just want to put it so that all of those lines are covered and also now these lines that form show where his horns go are fairly continuous. And that's what we're going to put on here next. So these are lines that you could avoid and you can change the angle of the horns, but a muskox horns 
slope down. And that's one of the things that make him look different from say, I think a water buffalo, when I was doing my research, I think a water buffalo go more sideways. So the slope of the horns actually does um, work as a bit of an identifier for this animal. So I transferred those markings and I'm gonna line them up here. And you can see where it goes on the muskox, and then these lines show you where the head continues, where the side of the body continues, and where this other horn is going to overlap it. So the lines on both the pieces below and above help give you some guidance about exactly where that piece goes. We're going to do the same thing with the horn on the other side. Get that lined up. And there that goes. Now we're going to put his muzzle in place. Right there. And now we've got these nice, easy markings for his nostrils and his eyes. You've got two different sizes of ovals here. The nostrils are the big ones. And then the eyes are significantly smaller. Um, if these eyes are smaller than you, like if the thought of doing outline stitching around these small eyes makes you go cross-eyed or makes you not want to do this project, there are a lot of other options. Um, I've got a whole blog post that tells you all different kinds of things that you can do with eyes with different products that I've tested. So I tested my favorite fabric markers and my favorite fabric paints that you can use instead of doing applique on the eyes. There's a tutorial for a hand stitch. There's, uh, if you have a, an embroidery machine, I have computerized files, free, down, free um, satin stitched ovals that you can use. So there's a lot of different options uh, if you don't want to applique and outline around those eyes. And I'll link to all of those um, in the description below this video. But there you go. He's all layered in place now. I'm going to take him to the ironing board and I'm going to fuse him down. Just follow the directions for whatever brand of fusible adhesive you're using. And then I'm going to take him to the sewing machine and do all of the outline stitching. And then I'll bring him back here and talk you through the path that I followed for that outline stitching. Okay, here he is all finished. All of the outlining is done and I'm just going to walk you now through the path that I take to do the outlining in order to minimize the number of times that I need to stop and start all of my stitching. So I go around all of the pieces. I hate satin stitching. So I use just straight line outline stitching and I go around it three times because I really like that kind of sketchy look to it. I go three times and I don't necessarily try and make my lines exactly line up on each other. I want it to look like I kind of drew it by hand. So here's the path that I follow. Okay, I started down here right before where the horns start to cross. And I went around this horn first three times. Once, twice, three times. And then on my third time around, I just continued and did like a little figure eight and went around this horn once, twice, three times. And then I continued past where I started just to get over here so I could do the top of his head there. One, two, three times, stopped and tied a knot. Then I've got some kind of unattached places I have to deal with. So I did the top of his hump. I just started on one side, went around once, twice, three times, tied that off. Around the, his chin, same thing. I started up in here, went around once, twice, three times, tied it off. Same thing around his muzzle. We got a lot of islands on this piece. Just three times around the muzzle and tied off. On the mouth, there's a little bit of, of help that you can do. I start at the top of the, the down stroke there and go down. And then I go to one side once, to the other side, back to the first side, back to this side, and back to the center. So that does four rows of stitching on that mouth and then back up to the top for a second row on that down stroke. And then just to match the bottom of the mouth, I did another back up, down and up to get four rows there. Each of the nostrils and the eyes, I just go around those one time because it's black stitching on black applique and you can't see it anyway. And then, uh, so that's just to hold it in place so it can be washed. And then I did all of his, the sides of his body in one. So I went down, started on one side, 
one, two, three. Just traveled along the bottom here, just a single row of stitching along the bottom. That's going to be trimmed away and cut, uh, enclosed in the seam allowance when I sew the blocks together, so that doesn't matter. And then one, two, three, tie it off, and he is all done. So that is how you make Mo the Muskox.